Uh, we are uh, back in the field again and uh, I think it's uh, 103 days after sowing now, although we had some re-sowing and replanting, so it's not quite accurate because we have quite a few places which we are planted later. So, And that creates a challenge now because we somehow need to figure out uh, when to harvest this field. Um, uh, there are various ways to do this. Um, we have an expert here with us today, uh, Martin Gummert, who is our post-harvest specialist and also leads the ERA program for us. So we'll ask him for help to help us determine where we are and what we do next. Okay, so there, as Achim said, there are different ways to determine whether the crop is ready for harvest. So uh, the easiest is basically to look at the color of the grains. So if you have 80% of the grains in a panicle, colored straw yellow, then that's an indication that it should be should be right. Another way to, to determine whether it, uh, the crop is ready for harvesting is look at the, at the hardness of the grains. And uh, the grains in the bottom of the panicle should be in the hard dough stage. So when you, when you basically open the grain and you look at it, it should still be a little bit soft, but not too soft, like, like uh, when you make a hard dough for, for cooking. So when you squeeze it, you, you, your nail should probably should still cut go the grain yeah. rather than, than mash it up, so to speak. Yeah, it, should, right? yeah. 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 it should not be brittle yet. So we start with a visual estimate of, of how ready the crop is, and we, we, we first look at the, the proportion of yellow grains, the proportion of straw yellow grains. Now Martin has suggested an ideal amount for harvest would be 80% yellow. Now in front of me here, we always have an issue as to whether it's representative or not, it's probably 50 to 60 percent yellow, something of that order. It's not quite ready yet. Now a more objective and professional way to assess how uh, how ready the crop is will be to measure its moisture content. Yep, and this is one way to do that. This is a moisture meter, so-called moisture meter. It measures the resistance of the crop, which is uh, basically dependent on the moisture content. And you have a small sample tray, so you take a, a sample from a panicle, as Lee said, 80% of the of the grains should be straw yellow. That basically says 80% of one panicle. And getting representative is always a challenge. There's almost that no. That is a challenge. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so so uh, you take a small sample like this, fill it in there, and then uh, what you do with this instrument basically you crush it. Oops. Can I give you this? You, you turn the knob and crush it, turn it all the way to the end and then uh, you measure the resistance and that gets translated in the reading of the moisture content and in this case it's 21.6 percent. Now what we're going to do is mix the greener one I've, I've, I've harvested. And because this is a very small sample it's not really representative neither for a small si uh, plot nor for the field. So what you have to do is you have to in one location you should two different, at least three different measurements. So now in this sample, for example, you have a lot more green grains than in the previous one. So the reading should be a lot higher. Mm -hmm. 27.9%. And you would take at least three samples and then you have a button here where you can average the readings and then you get the average reading for that uh, location. And then what you have to do is basically also measure in a representative way in the field because uh, the crop doesn't mature evenly everywhere in the field. We're facing the final tricky decision to irrigate or not to get irrigate, that is the question. So we're considering how moist the soil is now. How moist is the soil now? Moist. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're considering what the weather's like. What's the weather like? Hot. Dry. And we're considering how long we'd expect until we harvest. And our consensus is about 10 days to two weeks, something mm. of that range. It'll be close to two weeks time before you're back to do the deed. So we need this to last, to, to finish properly, I think it needs the two weeks. But it's moist. It's heavy clay, and we do want our combine to stay on the ground, not to explore the underground. I vote keep it dry. Yeah, I would have. If it was an experiment, and I knew that we would be doing hand harvesting, I would put on another irrigation just for safety. 
but we need to figure out that we have to come and visit combine and so the carrying capacity of that soil will be the deciding factor and we can't delay harvest because we see some lodging coming in so I'll go with the majority vote yeah I agree so <laughs> no more irrigation let's see but I pray for a little bit of rain tonight maybe <laughs> Well, on recent patterns, I think you'll probably have that have that wish granted. So there we right. have it. We won't irrigate again, and we'll it'll be in approximately two weeks. We'll come back and harvest about May second. <laughs>